Slide tray! I have been waiting for a long time to get one of these. Today, we're gonna to bring you along with to the Moride factory where we had this slide tray installed, as well as getting some of our questions answered by them before we did it. But first, I wanna show you why I wanted to get one of these installed in the first place. So when we first moved into this fifth wheel a couple months ago and moving out of our travel trailer, we had so much stuff just crammed into this pass-through. And then we picked up our batteries and components for our new electrical system. And we basically had to Tetris everything in there just to make it fit. So now that we finally had some space and time to get things situated, we now have this beautiful open area and I'm finally able to do what I wanna do. So one thing you need to be aware of about these sliding trays is that if you have too much stuff, they actually can become a hindrance. So there's lots of cool things you can do with these, like getting totes that perfectly fit inside the slide tray and then stack up. And as long as you clear all of your measurements, this slides nicely in and out. And then you can get to the stuff in the middle by sliding it all the way out. So this can really maximize your storage space as well as the functionality of it. So my big grand idea a long, long time ago was to get the e-bikes off of the back of our RV and put them inside of the RV, not only shortening our overall travel length, but really stepping up our security game by not having them back there and having them inside being protective, as well as the cleanliness of keeping them inside. So with this current boondocking stay that we just did, I finally got to utilize these e-bikes in the manner that I was kind of thinking about. And that is when we get to a new spot and we don't want to drag this fifth wheel around not knowing where we can turn around or where we can even fit, I can then pop out an e-bike right away and actually go out and do a little bit of scouting. So they do fit really nicely, but because we have a, a narrower pass through than a lot of these big fifth wheels, um, we can't turn the bikes sideways, really maximizing our space. So I just kind of got this set up, cleaned up and kind of put together. So I'm still playing around with where I'm gonna put my stuff, how the bikes are gonna work and all that. But I have to say, I really love the look, the functionality and being able to maximize everything on the sliding tray and not having to physically lug everything out just to get to the one thing I need. Now we'll go over some of this stuff as we're at the Moride factory, but you can see it's really not that difficult to put these in. There's just a few screws that uh, go right down into your decking. These come fully assembled and even a DIYer can put one of these in in about a half an hour. Now there's a few different types of these slide trays as well. And one of the major things was a 60% slide or a 80% slide. And that's how far the slide goes out. You can also get slides that come all the way to the cargo door as well as to the other cargo door. But I also wanted to leave this space right here open for maybe my hose reel and water filter. So that might look something like this. You know, these big triple water filters fits in here and these could even get mounted up higher. We have a hose reel from Moride as well that I'm trying to decide what to do with that. You know, this is a 50 amp RV. It has those big heavy cords that are kind of a pain in the butt to reel up. So they can either get mounted to the floor or mounted to the ceiling. But this to me just gave the best of both worlds. You could even put large totes in here, double stack them, and still utilize the slide on the other side. So instead of having the slide take up all of your pass-through, it just takes up three quarters of ours. You can even get slides that are half of it 
or you could put two slides in and have each one function independently or separately. So there's lots of flexibility. And I gotta say, since we've had this for the past month or so, I'm really excited to continue to try it out and see how it's gonna work perfectly for us. The amount of stuff that we had crammed into this pass-through was unbelievable. It was just stacked from end to end, bottom to top. And anytime I wanted anything, first of all, I didn't even know where it was, but I basically had to take everything out just to get to it. So this is, is definitely adding up. And then you have these little spaces that are kind of left over, like I said, this one here. And then on the sides of the trays, there's skinnier spaces for longer items like brooms or shovels, things like that. And you can even put stuff underneath the slide if it fits. So these are the little riser kit legs right here. You can get them taller. Uh, we needed at least this one inch to get over the lip of our RV, but you can even get it taller. You can put ladders under there. Uh, if it's wide enough, you can put solar panels or anything you want. Right now, I just have kind of leveling blocks that are sliding underneath there. So you don't have to go to Moride to get one of these things installed. Uh, you can get them ordered on e-trailer or uh, a few other online retailers, and you can really just put it in yourself. But because we were in the area in Indiana, we decided to stop by our good partners, Moride, and check out their facility. They actually have overnight spots for people that are getting work done there with full 50 amp service on the plug-in. All right, I'm here with Austin from More Ride, and before you ask, it is National Flamingo Shirt Day, so thank you so much for joining me today. I love the shirt. Yes, happy to be here. Got to rep the flamingos. <laughs> awesome. So we're actually getting a slide tray put in, and we're just gonna go over a couple of the questions that I've actually had, some of the things that I've been curious about. And first off, what is the best way for someone to measure in their pass-throughs? So not all RVs are made the same. There's some big fifth wheels that have massive baggage compartments, some motorhome users, and then there's the little smaller travel trailers that have really narrow and short uh, baggage compartments. Yeah. So what we're doing is we have a variety of different uh, measurements and sizes available in the aftermarket. And basically what we're doing is we're just measuring the total width of the tray. Um, we give you a variety of different options, anywhere from 20 inches wide up to 52 inches wide. So if it says, let's say 26 inches wide yep. for the tray, and I measure my pass through and the door opening is 26 inches, it will come through there. It will come through there. Okay. Yeah, so our 26 inch tray, for example, would it's be the like, overall. it's the overall outside dimension. So okay. it's like 25.95 roughly or something yeah. like that. So if you measure 26 inches from your total width, so your inside of your baggage compartment, that opening, yeah. if it's 26 inches, our 26 inch tray will fit. Nice. And another thing I was curious about was the 60% extension to the 80% extension. And what are kind of your thoughts on that and the main differences between them? Yeah, so um, great question. The main difference is obviously the extension. So there's the 60% and 80%. Yeah. Um, but the, the reason for it is the 60% is gonna slide out and you have 60% of whatever that total length is. So if you have a 90 inch tray, it's gonna extend out 60% of 90 inches. If okay. you have a 48 inch tray, it's 60% of a 48 inches. Yeah. So the 80% is gonna go out about 20% more than the 60%. Correct. And the only thing to consider with that is gonna be uh, weight capacity. So okay. um, with the 60% extension, you have an 800 pound weight capacity. Yep. Um, we use some different outriggers to tie everything together to give it more um, of a substantial structure so you can store a little bit more gear on the inside. Yeah. And then there's the 80% extension trays that only hold 500 pounds. Okay. And I say only, most people don't carry that much stuff, but some yeah. people like going up to the limit. So you kind of pick and choose. You, you get uh, 300 pounds more with the 60% extension. Mm -hmm. 
but some people need that added yeah. um, distance outside the door of their RV. Okay, that makes sense. And then do all of the trays open to both sides or do only some of them? Good question. So the 90 inch trays, 60% extension, will it will slide out both ways. So you can slide it this way or out the other way. Mm -hmm. And all of our 80% extension trays also can slide out both ways. Okay. One thing to know is um, our 80% extension trays only come in 72 inch wide models. Mm -hmm. So we don't have the same variety. If you want the 500 pound 80% extension, you do have to get a 72 inch long tray. Okay, and that's the one that I went with, just kind of mulling over all these different options. I felt like that was gonna give me the best to leave about 24 inches by my water compartment mm -hmm. for filters, water softeners, or uh, even stacking totes if I wanted to do it that way. Okay. And then I can have that 80% extension out of my passenger side. So yeah. that was kind of uh, the thought process that I had, but there's definitely a lot of different scenarios. And then also on mine, we had to go with a riser kit so it would fit over the lip. Is that pretty common for a lot of people to do or does that kind of depend? Yeah, it kind of depends on the model. So <clears throat> every manufacturer designs their baggage doors differently and their subframing and their flooring. Um, so for your alliance, um, you did need the riser kit to lift over top of that baggage door yeah. lip is what we call it. Okay. So all of our cargo trays, regardless of which model, gives you 1.6 inches of clearance. Some people are like, why 1.6? Well, typically one and a half inches is the lip on those baggage doors. Okay. And so underneath the tray, so if we slide this in, yeah, underneath the tray is one and a half inches of clearance underneath there. Okay. So if you have, you know, a 1.6 inch lip or taller, that you will need sense. to either shim it with two by fours or yeah. one by four or whatever you want to put under there. Or we also offer a riser kit that's adjustable up to like three and a half inches of height. Okay. And so the riser kit that I have, I could change how high I want it if I want it. Yeah. Because some people are putting things underneath the tray, uh, tables, I don't know, skis, snowboards. <laughs> I'm not sure what you carry in your RV, but like yeah. anything that would, that would fit underneath it. Yep. And that's the nice thing about, you know, the RV lifestyle accommodates a number of different hobbies. So skiers, fishers, hunters, yeah. um, you know, tables, chairs, anything like that. Yeah. Anything that's small and thin can, can slide under there. All right, my very last question is all about the install. We're obviously getting it done by you guys, the professionals, but can somebody do this on their own? Yeah, the nice thing about our cargo trays uh, compared to anyone else out there is that these come fully assembled. So really there's two main components of the tray. There's gonna be the upper tray assembly that comes with you know the side rails the flooring that's fully carpeted mm -hmm. and then the other half is going to be the bottom railing which basically comes with a variety of different hole settings um, so there's holes at the the front the back the middle and all of our trays come with a big hardware pack so we give you the option to use short like one inch screws mm -hmm. we give you long two and a half inch screws we give you bolts if you want to bolt through the floor so again with most of our products, they're very user friendly, very easy to install. Yeah. Um, usually takes anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. It can take a half hour if you have to shim some stuff, Yeah. Um, but very easy to install. So if you have a Phillips head screwdriver and um, a Phillips head bit, that's all it takes to install this. Cool. And I lied, I got one more question. Okay, let's hear it. So if somebody orders these, do they have to get made? And what's kind of the, the lead way time for somebody ordering one? Yeah, so most of our trays, since we do all the manufacturing here in the US um, at our main campus here in Elkhart, um, we do everything in-house. So from cutting the metal to forming, powder coating, building the carpet and the table, all this is made in-house. Nice. Um, but we do stock a lot of these subcomponents. Okay. And our distri distribution customers, um, like the big national distribution company mm -hmm. companies that sell to our dealers, like the Camping Worlds and the General RVs and all those other big dealerships yep. stock these in their warehouses. Okay. So you can go online, you can order, um, you can buy it through a local dealership, and typically, if you can't get it same day, you can get it within a day or two. Nice. Perfect. Well, it's always a pleasure seeing you, Austin. I appreciate all the information, and I'm excited to get ours done today. So, have you been thinking about getting a slide tray? 
I can definitely say it's pretty cool if you decide to do it. It's not for everyone and not for every RV, but it's definitely one of those things that is a really nice item to have. I'll put links to each trailer down below so you can check out the different sizes. Thanks again to our partners, Moride, and we'll see you guys on the next video.